brother. Oh, my brother. How many have come to worship him this morning? How many have truly come to praise him this morning? Amen. We thank God for you. We are blessed this morning. Not only to have the First African Baptist Church to come into fellowship with us. But we also are blessed to have a preacher. Pastor. A lover of people. A heart for the people. And Pastor Roderick Green, we count him as a brother beloved we acknowledge his wife sister Lynn amen God bless you back there God bless you sister beloved first lady of the first African Baptist Church and we want to recognize our first lady first lady Jacqueline Flakes the third amen God bless you all ministers wives and the ministers that are here with us we thank you for this opportunity to worship together and so we want to bring Pastor Green in his own way as God has given him the word to share with us. So let us raise our hand and say, Pastor Green, Pastor Green. Preach, preach the word. The word. Pastor, Green, Pastor Green, preach, preach. the word. word. One more time, Pastor Green, Pastor Green. Preach, preach the word. My friend and brother, Pastor Green, Roger Green, come as you.
Oh, bless the Lord. If it's been amazing to you, you ought to be able to stand on your feet in the house today and be a witness of how he's been magnificent. He's been glorious, full of grace, loving kindness, tender mercy. African Baptist Church. I, I thank God for the members and I thank God for what they do for our family and I'm grateful for the privilege of being able to be a servant for them. Giving honor to Pastor Flakes and First Lady Flakes and to all the great members and officers of the Four Street Missionary Baptist Church. We are excited again for this day of celebration for you, Pastor, and your family, and for the church. Amen. And we pray God continue blessings on your ministry and the longevity of what this church and this pastor means to Columbus, Georgia. Amen. Amen. I just want to thank God for my wife again. Baby, just stand. Amen. Amen. Every now and then I find myself getting up in the middle of the night to kind of look over to see if I can see her wings. Amen. Y'all will catch that on the way home. Amen. Thank God for my daughter. Amen. Where's she going? Amen. Amen. Ebony, where are you? Amen. Stand up, baby. Amen. Amen. Pray for us. She's going to be in high school next year. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Amen. For those of you who are part of the NRA, I'll be visiting with you. Amen. That's my baby, so I'm going to protect her. Amen. I thank God for that song. Amen. That's a new school song. Amen. Old school worship, a new school song. And, and maybe some of you that, that was a little bit above your experience from the church. But you know, every, every now and then we have to reach back a little bit. And, and he is indescribable, but, but somebody said these words. He's sweet. I know, oh, he's sweet, I know, anybody know that? Dark clouds may rise, a strong
Anybody back from the old church? I'll tell the world wherever I go. My grandmama used to sing this one. Whoa, I have found a Savior and he sweet I know. Come on, everybody sing. He's sweet. He No. Yes, he, he's so sweet. I know. You got to sing this when you're just sitting by yourself. Every day won't be sunny. And sometimes you're going to get some storms. And the strong. Wins me. Can I get a witness in the house? What you gonna do? I'll tell the world. Yeah, wherever I go. What you gonna tell them? Point to yourself. I found a savior, and he. One more time. One more. So sweet. I know. No music. No music. Everybody sing. He's sweet. Woo. Come on, sing it like you mean it. He's so sweet. some praise. Give God some praise. It's a day of celebration. If he's done anything good for you, if he's made a way out of no way, if he's healed your body, if he's given you hope, if he's made a way, open up a door. Yes. Dry tears from your eyes. Let you get a peaceful sleep. He's sweet, I know. He's sweet, I know. He's sweet, I know. Slow down, let me slow down, let me slow down. Jeremiah. Jeremiah, I have two scriptures for you today. It's two scriptures, and we're going to tie it together with the more great celebration of today. Yes, it is Pastor's anniversary, but today is Palm Sunday, and it is also a day of celebration, and everything must focus on Jesus. Amen. But to give you a point of reference as we Think about Jesus and what he has done for this day of celebration in light of what Pastor Flakes has accomplished in his ministry. If you will, turn with me to Jeremiah chapter 3. 
verse 15. And when you get there, put your finger there and, and turn also to Luke chapter 19, verse 41 through 44. Jeremiah 3 and 15. Luke 19. 41 through 44. If you have it, please say amen. amen. If you're looking for us, say, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Amen. <laughs> amen. 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 Luke and Jeremiah. From the Old Testament, Jeremiah 3 15. And let me just say this, Jeremiah is a prophet who, 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 who went through a difficult ministry. Amen. And as much as God called him and selected him to give this message, you must understand Jeremiah's predicament. Jeremiah found himself addressing a nation literally that was hurtling headlong toward judgment from God. The Israelites may have feared the future as outside powers and influences drew near, but rather than respond with humility and repentance, the people of Judah primarily lived as islands unto themselves disregarding both the Lord's commandments and in doing that, they increased the danger that resulted from their disobedience in sin. So during his overall message to, from God to Israel, he states confidently these words from Jeremiah 3.15. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. My brothers and sisters, as we turn to Luke 19, 41 through 44, I believe we can all agree that every pastor ought to have a heart after Jesus. Amen. Amen. Everything that Jesus did, Jesus literally left a blueprint of what pastors ought to do as we lead people closer to Jesus. Amen. And so look at this short synopsis of an event of Palm Sunday. Verse 41 says, and when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it, saying, if thou hast known, even thou at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. From the days, for the days shall come unto thee that thine enemy shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee round and keep thee in on every side and shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children within thee and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation just want to share with you this thought today. Palm Sunday's tears, a pastor's journey. Palm Sunday's tears, but a pastor's journey. My brothers and sisters, as Jesus is entering this city, this day that we celebrate today is called Palm Sunday. It's because of the palm branches that are used to layer the street during Jesus' triumphant entry into the city of Jerusalem. The triumphant entry 
was prophesied by Daniel in chapter 9, verse 25, 483 years earlier. The triumphant entry is recorded by all of the gospel writers. The setting, my brothers and my sisters, is this is about five days before the actual day of Passover celebration. The eight-day festival of Passover celebrated early in the morning each day. It, it commemorates the emancipation of the Israelites from slavery when the death angel was supposed to come by every person's house and they were instructed by most to put blood over the doorpost and the death angel would pass by and subsequently by their obedience they were freed from Pharaoh's grip. My brothers and sisters, we don't celebrate Palm Sunday just because we want another fan in our uh, 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 list of things that we want to do. We celebrate Palm Sunday because it is a day that God came and looked over the city and wept for us before they shouted Hosanna. Jesus and his disciples are, have returned from Bethany. They are preparing for the most important of the feasts to begin. Over 300,000 pilgrims have come converging on that little city called Jerusalem. And if we look past the triumphal entry, we look and we enter into the Palm Sunday's tears. The text says he beheld the city and he wept over it. As Jesus gets closer to the city, Brother Carter, he, he beheld the city and began crying over Jerusalem. Can I share this with you today? Uh, Dr. Flakes, Jesus still beholds all of our cities and our circumstances and our condition, and he still weeps over us. He looks at us. Uh, Sister Atkins, and, and he looks at the lessons and he, he looks at what our Lord and Savior has come to do. And a good pastor takes these lessons and says, Lord, if I could just be a little bit like you, that means every time I look over the congregation, I need to be able to shed a little tear. Why should a good pastor be able to cry sometime? because it shows his compassion. Why should a good pastor look over the congregation, not because he's high, but because he's a servant, and look at the, the things of the, that go on with the congregation and say, I feel for you, because it's what Jesus did. Yeah. Verse 41 shares with us a good thing that good pastors ought to do. Look at what Jesus does. Jesus sees, watch this, number one, he sees beyond the pleasantries. When we entered into the sanctuary today, even before we even came across the parking lot, we, we met a family that was coming to church and they were just so nice to us. They just greeted us. Do you know that there are people that would be nice to you and yet will call out for your crucifixion at the same time? Amen. Jesus sees beyond the pleasantries. The niceties. Just like Jesus, good pastors have a heart that looks beyond the surface of what we do in the church and always searches for the truth. He beheld the city. The Lord sees all and knows all and so much in the world is so superficial. Everything that glitters is not gold. There is a beautiful Jerusalem. There is a beautiful Columbus, Georgia. Ah, it's a breathtaking view depending on what mountain or hill you want to stand on in Columbus in the evening time. And it looks beautiful as you look over the city. And yet there are people that have pomp and circumstance for every occasion that we have in the city. And Jesus looks at it and says, I still have to weep. We're celebrating pastor's anniversary today and yet there's somebody in the pews. You're just one minute away from a good cry because of what you're going through. And pastor, although we're celebrating him today, he's still, he's thinking about you. He's thinking about your situation. He's thinking about what you're going through because it's really not about him. It's about the Jesus in him. 
But the example Jesus gives to us in the text is Jesus sees beyond the outward beauty. All of you look good today. Wow, y'all really look good today. And yet, we dress ourselves up on the outside. And we're crying on the inside. Suffering on the inside. And what makes Jesus cry is what he sees. Is Jesus grieved by what he sees in our lives? Can I just ask you that? Is Jesus grieved by what you're going through in your life? We all in some form or fashion, outwardly and inwardly, cause the Lord to grieve sometimes. Jesus sees us for who we really are. Much like Jesus, good pastors endeavor, watch this, to know who you really are. The pastor is not really concerned about your Sunday morning going to meet himself. He wants to see your Monday through Saturday self. Jesus sees beyond the outward church. Our churches are beautiful inside and out, but he's talking about you, the church. He, he doesn't want you looking good on the outside and sinning on the inside. He, he doesn't want our Sunday morning best. He wants God.
have it more abundantly. Jesus knows our full potential. He knows what you can achieve. Don't underestimate Jesus because he says by his own words that you will be above and not beneath. You will be the lender, not the borrower. As a matter of fact, I've even said the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Do you know that Jesus will turn your situation around? You can be the head, not the tail. You are the elect of Jesus Christ. But you've got to live for him, not for them. We bring Jesus' pain because we don't tap into our full potential. Good pastors are always going to challenge you to step up and step further than you ever have stepped before. Because it's got to take a faith walk to get to where your God wants you to be. That's why faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. I know you can't see it, but if you just walk in faith, you can reach your full potential as the church. But lastly, Jesus longs to give us peace. Verse 42 says that the things belong to your peace. Peace, what peace? The peace that surpasses all understanding. The peace that allows you to sleep at night. The peace. Somebody say peace. You got to say it like you mean it. Peace. Peace. Anybody in the house need some peace? He says the things which belong to your peace. He finishes by telling them in verse 43 and 44. It tells us that the days will come when your enemies will come and cast a trench around you and besiege you. In other words, you will have an enemy on the attack. They will try to shut you down and shut you out and leave you underprivileged and underestimated. But Jesus says, I have come that you might have peace. In other words... If you have failed to keep your mind stayed on me, Jesus saying, that's why you're suffering in sin. Because you're causing me to weep because, because you don't realize yet that I love you so much. That I love my father so much. That he sent me wrapped in flesh over 42 generations to come through this city and yes I'm weeping now but there's another thing I've got to do before I take my journey home can I tell you the story is there anybody here wants to know the story the story is and that's what good pastors do y'all we preach this gospel and I'm getting ready to leave you Jeremiah 3.15 said and I will give you pastors According to mine heart, we shall feed you knowledge and understanding. That word knowledge comes from the Hebrew word dea, meaning knowledge of God. That word understanding comes from the Hebrew word sakal, which means to be circumspect, intelligent, considerate, teachable, skillful, having good success with comprehension and insight. Good pastors will teach you and feed you the knowledge of God so that you can be what God has called you to be. And you can't get there unless you get the gospel. The gospel is he came, he lived, he worked, he ministered, he suffered, he bled. He died. He was buried. But early third day morning, he gets up with all power in his hands. If you don't get anything else today, Palm Sunday's tears will always be a pastor's journey. And so I leave you with this. 
We preach this word to get your attention of the things of this world and to get your attention on the things of Christ. We preach this gospel to shake up your comfort zone, to disturb your conscience, to quicken your spirit, to what the Lord has been trying to tell you. I feel my help coming now. We preach this gospel to warn you to turn from your evil ways. Live for Christ and Christ alone. We preach this gospel to equip the saints to press toward the things of God's potential in your life. We preach this gospel because Jesus is our peace. Peace for individuals. Peace for the church. So, as I take my seat, whatever tears you've cried, they can change to joy. Whenever you cry your tears, they can change to tears of joy. However your tears come, they can change uh, to joy. Because, because, I love that part right there. Because of Jesus, yes, Palm Sunday's tears brought those tears uh, to Jesus. But I want to remind you, Pastor Flakes, just as Jesus did, the Palm Sunday tears came to Jesus, but Jesus kept on going. Jesus, he kept on going uh, through the city. He kept on going uh, through the Garden of Gethsemane. He kept on going uh, through the portrayal of Judas. Um, he kept on going uh, through the arrest um, and Peter's denial. Uh, Jesus, uh, he kept on going uh, with the mob's mockery. Uh, he kept on going uh, with Pilate's indecision. Uh, he kept on going uh, through the scourging and the beatings. Uh, he kept on going uh, with a crown of thorns on his head. Uh, he kept on going uh, with the weight of the cross beam. Uh, carried up uh, the stations of the cross. Uh, he kept on going uh, until uh, he was nailed in his hands. Uh, nailed in his feet, uh, pierced in the side. Uh, the blood uh, came streaming down. Uh, and I just want to leave you with this. Uh, what can uh, wash away my sins? Uh, nothing but uh, the blood of Jesus. Uh, what can make me whole again? Uh, nothing but uh, the blood of Jesus. Uh, Palm Sunday's tears, uh, a pastor's journey. Uh, good evening, y'all. Uh, I gotta go home now. Uh, but hallelujah, Jesus, uh, for everything you did. Uh, thank you, Jesus, uh, for every tear you shed. Uh, thank you, Jesus, uh, for your cross. Uh, thank you, Jesus, uh, for your victory. Uh, thank you, Jesus, uh, for being in our lives. Uh, thank you, Jesus, uh, for giving us good pastors. Uh, thank you, Jesus, uh, for giving us good churches. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.